Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video this evening. I hope that you're doing great and we're going to be talking about what is happening across the Caribbean with that newly marked area in the southwestern part of the basin. So that is where we could see development as we head into next week as models have been showing for quite some time now and I've been talking about that as well. So we'll be looking at the latest coupled with uh, the current conditions across the area. So let's get into it and here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery of the North Atlantic. There is some activity off Africa, but nothing too major out there. Now there is that front across portions of the US and that is going to be helping to induce some additional rainfall activity for portions of the Gulf Coast as we head into the early part of the new week. So the tail end of it is going to be stalling within the area and trying to get itself together, uh, gaining some more activity in association with it. And as a result, there could be quite a bit of rainfall across sections of the Gulf Coast states, parts of Texas, even for Louisiana and even into Mississippi uh, and even further toward the east, there could be uh, some substantial rainfall activity and across some of these areas there have been dry conditions for some time so this would be beneficial. However, a lot of heavy rainfall can result in flooding across some areas so that would be the hazard as we head into next week. And speaking of, let's go ahead and take a look at this surface chart here. So it may be a little bit confusing as we can see that all these uh, various markings are kind of densely packed on this but there are some orange lines on this map here and those are representative of troughs. Those troughs are areas of low pressure and with those we sometimes see a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity developing and that is over in the Western Caribbean right now and also in the vicinity of the Dominican Republic. And as we go on to these satellite imagery here we can definitely see uh, signs of those troughs within the area because all of that activity is taking place just in the vicinity of Central America and even over across uh, portions of the Northeastern Caribbean. A lot of thunderstorms across sections of Haiti and parts of the Dominican Republic as well. There has been some rainfall activity for Puerto Rico and even parts of the Virgin Islands and overcast for many areas. So that's been the kind of weather across some areas today. But for portions of the Leeward Islands, it has been a bit on the sunnier side. Some occasional showers moving through the Windward Islands, parts of southern Martinique, even for St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, Grenada, and even for sections of Trinidad, Tobago, and the southerly tip of Barbados. There has been some shower activity through today. ABC Islands in the clear with much not happening across the region, and again as we head west, there we see all that activity. Now we're likely to see a continuous rainfall increase with all this persistent convection here in portions of the western Caribbean as we head into next week and with that an area of low pressure could form maybe by the middle of the week and that is when we could see development of that area of low pressure so we'll definitely have to be watching for that We'll look at the latest from the National Hurricane Center in a moment. But across Jamaica and some spots in Cuba, there has been some thunderstorm activity and even some showers moving through some areas. Cayman Islands a bit on the drier side. Same story across portions of the Turks and Caicos Islands and the Bahamas. And it's also quite windy for some of us. With the National Hurricane Center, here we're seeing a 30% chance of development. So in the earlier update, it was at 20%. So there's a slight increase in the formation chance. And we're not seeing an X. As I said, that low pressure area could form by the middle of next week. That is when we'll see that X to show where it is located. But we could see development if the conditions allow for that to happen. One factor is already well on its way, which is those very warm surface waters. And not only at the surface, there's just a lot of heat energy available to actually support development, but that's not the only thing. Because uh, the wind shear right now, let's look at the wind shear map for the Caribbean. So the red lines, they indicate unfavorable wind shear. Yellow means neutral. When we see a lot of those green lines, that means that the wind shear is not going to be interfering much with development. So that is what really helps to breed the uh, these tropical systems when they're just developing uninterrupted and also when there's not much dry air intrusion. Here we are looking at the current map of the dry air, which is marked by those shades of yellows, oranges, and reds. And that is pretty much prevalent across sections of the Gulf, of the East Coast, and generally out in the Atlantic. But for the majority of the Caribbean, especially going to the South Caribbean, there is 
not much dry air in the area. However, with that front making its way out, usually these fronts help to increase the hostility of the environment as it relates to tropical cyclone development because there is increased wind shear which helps to rip those thunderstorms apart and prevent the system from being symmetrical and organized. And then there's also an increase in dry air because with uh, that massive cool air dipping from Canada, cool air is not really able to retain moisture. And so now we're going to be taking a look at the GFS and the Euro ensembles as it relates to that potential system. So we're kickstarting with the GFS ensembles and this goes out to Friday evening of next week. So a week out from now and the more we see these ensemble members in agreement with that particular track of the system, in this case up to the northeast, the more likely it is that we'll actually see uh, that sort of outcome. So that would put areas such as Cuba, Jamaica, even for Hispaniola, mostly for Haiti, uh, going toward the Turks and Caicos Islands and parts of the Bahamas at risk if there is development because again development is not a guarantee and that is why those areas should keep watch for potential development so there are these various members here showing that we could definitely see something that airflow pressure is likely to form and uh, we may see a tropical depression or even a tropical storm become of it as it relates to the euro ensemble members now we can see that there's not as much but they're definitely showing that area flow pressure forming and again we could see a tropical depression become of the system at least but uh euro is not showing as much development compared to the gfs and now we're going to be taking Taking a look at the icon so there aren't ensemble uh, members available in this format for the icon but we're going to be taking a look at what the model has to show here so here we have it this is as we head out towards the same time friday evening of next week and there we see what seems to be a tropical storm and this would be making its way up to the northeast so heading straight in the vicinity of jamaica as i said that is an area that should be keeping watch for this system because if there is indeed development then jamaica could be a potential landfall area and usually with a tropical storm landfall there are those periods of very heavy rain which trigger flooding mudslides landslides and uh, even those rough seas and those tropical storm force winds which may cause some damage to weak structures resulting in some trees being blown down and even those poles as well so that is usually what to expect with a tropical storm however a tropical storm scenario for sure remains hypothetical at this point in time but even if we don't see development, an area of all those disorganized showers and thunderstorms make its way through and actually results in tropical storm-like conditions for some areas. So it's an area to watch as I said and I'll be keeping you guys posted as time goes by but that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this evening update. So I hope you found it to be quite informative and if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you when I get the chance to do so and remember to always be with the wise.